praise the Lord. I take this opportunity to welcome you to our broadcast this day, Thursday, the 7th of May, the year 2020. Our sign language interpreter is Grey Ngogi. Let's pray together as we start. Our Father, we thank you and we honor your holy name. Thank you, Father, for the gift of this day. It's the day you have made that we may rejoice in thee. Have a closer walk with you and even hear from you this morning. We therefore invite the Holy Spirit to be with us and to guide us even as we hear from you. For we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. This week, we have been sharing on the doctrine of sin. Yesterday, we were learning about the warfare we have as Christians with our greatest enemy, Satan, whose ministry is to steal, to kill, and to destroy. We also learned that the devil is a thief, he is a murderer, and he is also a deceiver. He deceived Eve into eating the forbidden fruit, and sin came into the world. The entire nature of man was mentally, morally, spiritually, and physically attend, uh, affected by sin. We cannot forget the biggest mistake that Eve did was to move close to the for forbidden tree. We cannot take ourselves close to a temptation and get away with it. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 22, it tells us that to avoid every kind of evil. We also read in Romans 12 and verse 9, hate what is evil and cling to what is good. Today, we shall look into man's sinful state, which was occasioned by inheritance of the sinful nature that man acquired after the fall. We saw that sin is failure to hit the target of life. It is also failure to do what we ought to do and what we should do. There are three things we learned in sin that sin kills innocence. And no one is precisely the same after sinning. Sin leaves a permanent scar in our lives. Innocence once lost cannot be recovered. Also, sin kills ideals. Sin is like a suicide. Sin kills the will to do that which is good. And when something becomes a habit, it becomes a slave. We become a slave to that particular thing because it becomes a necessity. Sin may be forgiven, but the effects would remain. The only sin I know that cannot be forgiven is the sin of dying 
a sinner. Our text today comes from the book of Luke, chapter 15, from verse 11. Jesus continued, there was a man who had two sons. The younger one said to his father, Father, give me my share of their estate. So he divided his property between them. Not long after that, the younger son got together all he had, set off for a distant country, and there squandered his wealth in wild living. After he had spent everything, there was a severe famine in that whole country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to a citizen of that country, who sent him to his field to feed his pigs. He longed to feel his stomach with the pods that the pigs were eating. But no one gave him anything. When he came to his senses, he said, how many of my father's hired servants have food to spare? And I am here starving to death. I will set out and go to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. So he got up and went to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son, drew his hands around him, and kissed him. The son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am not worthy to be called your son. Verse 23, Bring the fattened calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. So they began to celebrate. We share about the story of this prodigal son who asked his father to give him his inheritance. And we are told that once he got his inheritance, he took off to a far country where he squandered his wealth with worldly living. Now, what do we learn from the prodigal son about the sinful state of man. Number one, we do learn that a sinful state is a state of departing and distancing from God. It is a state of departing and distancing oneself from God. One has no desire for the things of God. We saw the prodigal son went to a distant country, away from the father. We also distance ourselves away from God. Some have no desire for the church, no desire to serve God, no desire even for fellowship or for prayer meetings. 
Friends, do not keep distance with God. We are currently being told to keep distance so that we do not get coronavirus. Here I tell you today, it is more serious. We, 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 we should keep distance with sin. Sin is more serious than coronavirus. Secondly, is that a sinful state is a spending state. A sinful state is a spending state. The prodigal son spent all what he had. He spent all what he had and he left himself nothing. He was in need. How do you spend your money? How do you spend your talents? How do you spend your time? Is God a priority as far as your resources are concerned? We read in Isaiah chapter 55 and verse 2, why spend money on what does not satisfy? The young man was just spending. A sinful life is a, is, is a life of spending, spending carelessly on what does not satisfy you. Thirdly, a sinful state is a wanting state. Some spend money because they wish to, but not because they have a need. After spending state, it's always good to remember that there will be a famine state. The prodigal son, after spending all what he had, we are told there was famine in that land, and he was in great need. You find that at that time, you find that you are misused and you are misplaced. He had to be employed to feed pigs. He was misused and he was also misplaced. The, the, the fourth point is that a sinful state is an excessive state. The prodigal son spent money excessively. He squandered all his money, the Bible says, with prostitutes. Even as today, why should you buy a woman who is not your wife, a car or a house? There are many who are doing that. It is because of sin that you can spend excessively for that that is hopeless, for that that will take you to sin. Someone defined this kind of love as L standing for lake of fire. O stands for ocean of tears. V standing for valley of, valley of sorrows. And E, end of life. Of course, the wages of sin is death. Number five, a sinful state is a state of perpetual dissatisfaction. One does not get satisfied, whatever the case. We read in Isaiah 55 verse 2, why spend money on what is not bread? And your labor on what does not satisfy? People go, go away from God to get satisfaction, but they are disappointed most of the time they are disappointed. You remember the story of the Samaritan woman. She had come across five men. In fact, the one she had that time was the sixth one. But six men did not satisfy her. She had to look for this man, Jesus, who satisfied her and gave her water 
that you not thirst again. The world will never satisfy you. But it's only Jesus that will satisfy. Number six, a sinful state is a state that cannot be expected to be relieved. There is no rest except from the Lord. Remember the rich young ruler in Mark chapter 10 from verse 17 to 22. The Bible says he was youthful. He was a, a, a young person, yet he didn't have peace. He didn't have joy. He didn't know what to do to inherit the kingdom of God. Many are fighting to be young, and there is nothing wrong with that. In fact, the Bible says, let your, let your heart give you joy in the days of your youth. But that, that is not a ticket for salvation or for heaven. This young man, we are told he was rich. Maybe he could buy whatever money can buy. He had bought himself all what he needed. Yet, he didn't have peace. Yet, he didn't have joy. Yet, he didn't know what to do to inherit the kingdom of God. The Bible says, what will it benefit man if he gains the whole world and loses his life? We are told that this young man, he was a ruler. Being a ruler, he, was, he had high status. He had power. He had authority. Yet, he didn't have peace. He didn't have joy. He didn't know what to do to inherit the kingdom of God. We are also told he was religious because he was told... You know the law. Do not steal, do not kill, do not commit adultery. And he said that I have kept. Since I was a young man, I have kept all that. Maybe if it was baptism, he had been baptized. He had been confirmed. Maybe he was a member of the choir. Maybe he was a member of, the, of Kama. But yet deep in his heart, he didn't know what to do to inherit the kingdom of God. Jesus told the Jews, unless your faith and your righteousness surpasses that of the Pharisees, you shall never inherit the kingdom of God. Point number seven, a sinful state is a state of death. Romans 6.23 tells us that the wages of sin is death. We also read in 1 Timothy 5 and verse 6, but the widow who lives for pleasure is dead, even while she lives. Even while she lives, she is dead. Number eight, a sinful state is a set of lostness. Luke 10.19 says that Jesus came to seek and to save that which was lost. You are lost until you accept God's grace that brings salvation to man. You can be in the church, but lost. You can be serving God, but you are lost. You can do many things in God's kingdom, but you are lost. You can be even in church leadership, but you are lost. I once read this in our newspaper about a vicar in a parish in Manchester, UK, who wrote, who, who did a lot of theology. And after it all, he wrote a book entitled, There is No God. He was sacked by his bishop. Because it means he's in the wrong place. And he leads his congregation every Sunday in the creed that I believe in one God. Yet, he didn't know him at all. Number nine, a sinful state is a state of madness. 
on the prodigal son, we read in verse 17, when he came to his senses, when he came to his senses, it means he was not in his senses. All that time he was spending, all that time he was living wildly, he was not in his senses. Sometimes you wonder things that sinners do. You wonder whether they are normal. And that's why in, in, in many cases, the judge will send them to the doctor to be seen whether, whether they are normal because of the kind of things they do. We read in 1 Timothy 6 and verse 9, those who want to get rich fall into temptation and a trap and into many foolish and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and into destruction. Finally, a sinful state is a hopeless state. We read in Proverbs 24 and verse 40, for the evil man has no future hope. For the evil man has no future hope. Friends, like the prodigal son, you can come to your senses, arise, and ask God for forgiveness. The prodigal son decided to go back to his father and to claim the lowest position in the household. Matthew 11, verse 28. The Lord says, come to me, all you who labor, and are heavy ridden, and I'll give you rest. The Lord will give you that rest. You will become a new creation in the kingdom of God. Let me finish with this illustration. There was this man who used to make the local brew using honey. One day he went to buy honey so that you prepare the local brew. And he was to go across a forest. And after he bought the honey, and he was coming back in the middle of the forest, he fell in a ditch. And it was a big ditch, a deep ditch. And he tried to come out. He couldn't be able to come out. He tried to shout, and there was nobody around there to help him. Finally, some two young men were passing by, and they heard this man shouting. And she, they went to where the shouting was coming from. And so they saw him down, in deep, in, down deep with his honey put up in a debe. And, and he explained them. I was passing by, I fell here. Please, can you remove me? And so they tried. There, there was no way they would, be able, they would be able to remove him. And so what they thought is that they went somewhere and they, they looked for a rope to remove him. But as they, the, the man held the rope, he became too heavy. They were not able to lift him from the ditch. But as they looked down, they saw the man is holding the rope in one hand and the debe of honey with the other hand. And so he was so heavy for them to lift him out. And they tried to tell him, can you leave away the, 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 the honey so that we can save you? And the old man said, you have to remove me with my honey. They tried again and they couldn't. Finally, the man had an idea. They told him, why don't we run to the town and we get two more people and then we will be able to remove you with your honey. And as they went to the town and they looked for people, as they came back, there was heavy rain that started. Very heavy rain. By the time they came to where the man was, the whole ditch was covered with water. They could see part of the honey lying on top of the water, and the money was dead. He died 
because he could not leave his honey. Friends, you have to do away with any sin. You have to cling to that which is good. Jesus, raising his hands, telling you, come to me who labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. He wants to give you that rest. As you listen to me today, as you watch, maybe you are there and you need forgiveness. You want to do away with your sin. You want Jesus to come into your life. I'll ask that you say this prayer after me. See, say this prayer after me. Say, Heavenly Father, I know I'm a sinner. And Jesus, I know you came for me. You came and died on the cross because of my sins. And you rose from the dead that I may be forgiven. Come into my life now and forgive me my sins. Make me your child and write me in the book of life. Send your Holy Spirit to give me strength that I will be able to overcome the enemy, to live in victory, and at last to inherit your kingdom. We thank you and we honor you, for we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, we thank you and we do honor you. Thank you, Lord, even for all those who heard this message. Holy Spirit of God, we pray that this message will not turn back void, but it shall accomplish that which was purposed for. Thank you for those who said that prayer. Thank you that you have forgiven them, Lord. We pray, Father, that you will help them in their prayer life. You will help them even in study of your word. You will help them to live even in obedience to your word. We cannot forget to commit this nation into your hands, Father. We pray for your blessing. We pray, Father, that you may move and touch people in this nation with various needs. My God, we know that you delight in meeting us at our point of needs. Even at a time like this, that many people are living under the fear of coronavirus, Lord. Help us to put our faith and our trust in you because in you all are possible. We honor you and we adore your holy name. We commit to your church, the Anglican Church of Kenya, and the church in general, in this country and in the world, that, Father, you'll empower your church, you will revive your church to be able to undo the work of Satan in the lives of your people, that many may come to know you, Jesus. Thank you for your healing power. And for the many you are healing, Lord, even those that are in the hospital at a time like this, may you stretch your hand, touch them, and heal them, Lord. We bless you, we worship you, and we do honor your holy name. And now, may the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May his face shine upon you and scattered darkness from before your path, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen.